You know, I think about us, the three of us, what we could be. I think about it all the time. Please, it's terrible. No, it's not. I know Jim. She's my friend. I care about her. How's your day going? You look pretty. Thanks. I wore it just for you. Her father's a driver named Nick. He helped me to survive. Yes, you can, because I can't lose you. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. What about you? Your girlfriend is a badass. Welcome to Above the Garage, a Nick and June, The Handmaid's Tale podcast. Hi, friends. Welcome to the deep dive into season one, episode nine, which is entitled The Bridge. Let's do our round of introductions. Hi, I'm Megan. Hi, I'm Claudia. Hi, I'm Julia. Hi, I'm Scarlett. Hi, I'm Marigold. And I'm Kate. So um, Scarlett was talking about the paintings in um, the Putnam's house. And it reminded me of um, the season three season finale when um, June goes to the bar and like tries to trade with the bartender to get the planes. She's like, oh, yeah, I have a whole house full of like, you know, all these yeah, things. Rembrandt. Things. Yeah, that's right. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Billy wants the together. paintings. Yeah. 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 And then it's, I also thought um, that the bar at Jezebel's must be like a very strong Mayday connection because Rachel was the Mayday connection and then Billy in yeah. season three episode. Yeah. It seems like they're a hub because yeah. 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 It makes sense because it's kind of like an underground world type of yeah. Right. Yeah. place. Think- so it's seedy. So that that would be going yeah. on there. And the women also Beth said that the women spy on the um they use yeah, ketamine the to knock out the command go through their and phone go through their phone so yeah it seems like yeah. it's the, funny to me how the artwork is still kind of currency you think yeah you know like i remember seeing i am legend uh the movie and there's this huge van gogh on the wall it's like are you fucking kidding me like the world goes <laughs> yeah. to shit for people but people yeah. still go and get these invaluable pieces of, of art even when the world's going to shit. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge art fan, so I, I always pick up on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, which piece of art would you take out of the museum? Me? Mm-hmm. Oh, the Sarah Night Vincent Van Gogh. Yeah. <laughs> no Where questions is asked. Have you, is that at the Louvre? Where is it? No, that's at the MoMA. Um, I actually went to New York three years ago. Oh, I've seen see it. That painting. Yeah. Yeah. We I have cried. Some... Yeah. Yeah. Somebody told me, so we have a museum of art in Philly that, you know, the Rocky Steps and it's huge. And someone told me that it had like nothing, but I decided to go anyway. And it has so much. It has Van Gogh. It has, it has like really great art. So I guess if the world goes to shit, I'll go get something. <laughs> yeah. I probably would do the same thing too. Yeah. I had another thing too. Um, so Beth um, also says that uh, when Nick asks her to, to, you know, ask around about June. Her response is this, these girls in here are not in the best shape for a rebellion. And then it, it made me think of the other Jezebels um, in season four. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah. like, this is an interesting contrast. Like the girls at this Jezebel, they were, you know, I mean, it's been a, several years now, but they're ready <laughs> to be in a rebellion and they obviously poison a bunch of commanders so yeah and we were talking today Um, too just not about this episode but it'd be interesting if Nick's um wife is like a widow of someone she killed at the Jezebels oh yeah Mm -hmm. I could see that yeah I prefer that they just forget about Nick's wife altogether, but <laughs> don't we? Yeah. Meg, don't we? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, <laughs> he's like us. He's like, please make it go away. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, I was supposed to bring the ring for props. I, it, uh, I forgot <laughs> to like. Uh, I have. Uh, that's the baby. As a, uh, I mean, Charlotte Trent. starts mm-hmm. immediately uh, to reject. Uh, Naomi as a mom yeah and that ties Mm -hmm. perfectly into season two where she's getting so sick that because of that yeah because of this uh, that she almost dies because her mom is gone and it's um yeah it's like foreshadowing you see every Mm -hmm. scene with Naomi and the baby is like the baby rejects her she can't she can't be with her it's 
Yeah, yeah. the baby has a primal wound. Like, honestly, mm-hmm. that's what happens when sometimes you're yeah. born from the mother. And she wasn't, um, it, it, the child wasn't separated at birth. So she, the child yeah. was able to bond yeah. with it Janine. Was Janine was breastfeeding. So then to rip it from you after yeah. she knows your scent, she knows you're her food source and to it's a primal wound and, and they do have failure to thrive a lot of times when they're in a situation mm-hmm. like that. And so you it is probably like, best that they would just move along with the mom and not get them to bond with their yeah. real mother. It would be best for actually yeah. them to not do that. I mean, I feel like Madeline and Ever, like you said, like all along play at this like so consistently and well that, you know, Matt, uh, that Janine really cares about this baby deeply as, you know. Yeah. They yeah and that's why there's failure to thrive there right and yeah. then naomi never bonds like you said like she complains about waking up in the middle of the night which by the way we know she's not doing like we know the martha yeah that baby so i know yeah <laughs> not by that shit for one second yeah she's always complaining about the baby and janine loves the baby but i love that i love that scene um, in the future that we we're talking about when the baby is dying and they've yeah. even brought in like the best female doctor against Waterford's wishes and she can't save her and they bring Janine in and she takes all of this protective gear off you know and spends a night like holding her baby and that's what brings her brings her yeah. back and it's so beautiful right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it is so beautiful yeah and then when uh, Janine gets out of the house and Aunt Lydia says to June and all the girls she's tougher than you think mm-hmm. and I, I thought immediately um, to season four where June and uh, Janine get out and Janine is like I'm not a mushroom and I can do this <laughs> and stuff and then yeah. she proves herself that she is stronger and uh, right. It was a f- wonderful c- callback from there to season t- uh, yeah. four. Yeah. yeah, it is. And I love that their relationship continues. I, I, yeah. hate, I hate the things Janine says to June on the, in the milk train. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. like blaming her She's for... Right. Because Janine had... Janine would also have given up the handmade location if, yeah. her, chi- if her child was in danger. And it yeah. annoys me a little bit that she doesn't acknowledge that. Because we've seen what a good mom, you know, how much she cares about her kid. And well, Janine was never in that position. Right. But it's just. So obviously right. just that's how people always say like, oh, I would never do that. I would never join the sons of Jacob. I would yeah. never like June should yeah. know what she's doing. She's putting so many people at risk because I would never do that. People love doing that. And that's bullshit. You don't know what you're going to do mm-hmm. in that position. Right. And she, yeah. you know, and she's lashing out, which everybody does from time to time um but I, I also loved in season four when she rejoined her after saying bye and she was like can we exactly mm-hmm. together so obviously you know she loves her and it's all yes. good I I kind of viewed um June wanting to join Mayday like because of Janine having to give up her baby did you guys kind of have that feeling too mm. No, not in that sense I um I really put it together with the thing that she separates from Nick because it's like the first showing of season two three, season three when she's completely cut off from him and completely yeah. rebellious so I thought more to this that this is what um, this was a first step into this um, yeah That's push and react. pull mm-hmm. yeah and yeah mm-hmm. sure the, the baby thing um was surely a part of it but I think it started at the end of the last episode um, when she sat in the in her little uh, code room voiceover voiceover in her code yeah where oh, she yeah. Uh, writes in the wall and says uh, you are not alone I think that's where it um, la- kind of started okay yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I think it builds up in her like I think we see it like little yeah. by little and, and I agree yeah. with Claudia you know she does say, you know, I will not be that girl in the box. Yeah. Um, yeah. She yeah. sees what happens with Emily and, you know, so she goes back and forth. So obviously we see it throughout the whole season. So, but obviously, yeah, the, the thing with Janine had to push her further because yeah, she, eventually she finds out she's pregnant. So she's going to go through the same thing. Mm-hmm. Right. I had his, uh, the Nick just needs to chill. His sad head nod thing. 
oh god that we see throughout like the whole show every time he gets sad and he's like kind of like accepting his life is shit. yeah like a defeated kind of yeah and it's, defeated I think, right now like that those are the saddest I, I think these episode head nods are the saddest and then and season three when he's just been promoted to commander and he says i came to say goodbye oh god says, goodbye <laughs> oh, that is so painful i'm like yeah no. she's she's vengeful hopefully Woman. we get a flashback of that closed door yeah. <laughs> <laughs> please hopefully <laughs> um uh, but I think the worst head nod is the one um, in season four, episode five, Chicago, where he has to bomb oh, her. Yeah. This oh. was the worst. Yeah. He's like, yeah. okay, sh- Yeah. Yeah, that one's he in was face. Yeah, he like lost his like com- his facade or his. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, literally like slid massive. off. And he's face. like, well, there, there's no time. Oh my god. So. Yeah, yeah, he's stuttering. Yeah. I. I, I can't get over how good he plays that because yeah the, the transition from one face to another is so so real. I, yeah. I, I mean it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like playing two people at the same time. Yeah. Like, right. That really thought he was like battling, like there are two people right, in right, in his face. <laughs> yeah, and, and you can see yeah. it in his face. Mm-hmm. It's so sad for Nick. Yeah, and, and I do think too though that this is when he learned like a huge part of June's personality, like her vengefulness, you know, yeah. was after he broke up with her and yes, she <laughs> pays him back, you know, like I, I don't, I think she probably always intended to make things right with him and all, but he's going to suffer first. And oh yeah. <laughs> I get that. I get that. He was like showing, um, I deserve that. I, I fucked up. Yeah. So now she gets to do this it's okay she can't yeah. hurt me yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. not to compare everything to the season finale but like i feel like we know just from this moment on she doesn't let shit go um even nope. even things with yes. people that she loves you know although i am in that same context it's still shock i'm curious if in season five we see her be honest with Luke like she must resent him for oh yeah look at Claudia's Ooh, yeah. face <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah so it's in the book you read it remember oh yeah no that's true he does he does, he does. so I'm curious if we'll see her talk to him about that because usually she tells everybody how she feels when she's pissed off or when she's been wronged or whatever and she's just kind of not like that with him so maybe she won't I don't know because mm-hmm. she feels guilty she doesn't do it because she feels guilty for some reason towards him oh. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see because how they Hannah, interact yeah. in five mm-hmm. yeah oh, one more thing on that just kind of similar because I talk about a stupid finale every time we do a deep dive sorry when um Nick is giving June the warning under cover of giving Fred the warning that you know this is the last minute trip we don't know he'll be there be careful and he says, you're a good man, Nick, always looking out for me. And he's just <laughs> as delusional. He's just as delusional now as he is in the finale when he thinks that he's going to take his side over June's, right? When he's like, you know, June's already yes. walking out and he's like, help me, Nick, help me. You know, this is wrong. And then as he pissed if... the lips him. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, God, you don't get it. How do you not get it? He he knows that they have something going, had something going on. He doesn't know that it's still happening. But right. Serena told him, June told, June told him. him. Yeah. Nick um, held him at gunpoint. Nick yeah. held him in the room yeah. with the gun. Right. And he yeah. still doesn't get it. <laughs> and I love that green. part. <laughs> and, and they <laughs> married so Nick off because of this. Ah, I know. Yeah. Uh, because he was... Uh, supposedly having something with june he was still. watching out for june on her walk right yeah. yeah no um i think he got married didn't he get married off after he asked serena to help june because yeah of yeah, yeah right yeah. right yes fred, mm-hmm. fred, if fred sends him to die you know to the to the front because he held him at gunpoint but even in season three fred knows fred always knew he just didn't want to accept it because when he goes to see yes. her in the thing with the angel like that um, interaction between Fred and Nick, like you know, he knows. Like yeah. I, I oh, he's playing with him. the other day, yeah. he yeah. knows, he knows. Yeah. So it's yeah. like he just he's too full of himself to accept it. That that will burst mm-hmm. his pathetic bubble. That's what I think. He just acts the way that he acts. He's weak. 
I just don't setting. think Fred, I just don't think he thought that after all this time apart that they would still hold a torch yeah, for each other like that. Mm -hmm. So I think that it, it wasn't that, oh, I think he totally knew they were together. Like you said, he's been told. Um, he toyed with them at the angel wings, like, cause mm -hmm. he just had that power there. He knew about them. He just, it blew his mind that what you're still in love after this time apart, after, you know, you've been in Canada, like that type of true um, love, love is doesn't register. Him. Yeah. He's like, yeah. why? Ew. Yeah. Like he doesn't get that type of love. <laughs> yeah. Long lasting, enduring love is not something Fred can comprehend. <laughs> and that's why that kiss grossed him out he was disgusted <laughs> yeah. by and, <laughs> this, so good. and nick is a commander so um he he probably thinks that the power nick has is imp more important maybe than right. a woman mm -hmm. because it's for him it's like that yeah. but not for nick so yeah nick can yeah. be using jezebel's girls at this point why would he care about june but he right does. and it <laughs> also ties into that is when um when he says to him in the same in the elevator is she's too much to handle is that right to handle yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i just um, feel like he oh. gave a look at that part like oh, if you only knew he's like mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes season two episode two he knows exactly what to do with her. i know i know how to handle this <laughs> i got this friend <laughs> he's still got her like off two times or like and more at least we have oh, for sure. yeah right at the first i mean right, quite a so. bit I think Nick mm. is the only one that can handle her, actually. Yeah, I mean, uh, he knows how to like even at her angriest, and you know, most impulsive, crazy, whatever. He knows how to handle her. You know, yeah, he uh, even, knows how to use that energy and use it for good. Yeah. <laughs> also, season he meets, four he, he meets her needs. He meets her needs. And they match the energy, and they trade power, and just all these things that they like. It's amazing that they just get each other so well and yeah Fred doesn't get anything um I'm coming back to season four finale too <laughs> because uh Fred Fred and June the moment uh, where they talked about of Fred and the stuff and um I thought about it when they when she came to seduce him into bringing her to the Jezebels and it was all like um this power play yeah. and her her lovely voice and the, uh, all of the stuff and yeah. uh he totally played on that in season four uh in the finale when he said he misses her and he um he always thought that they helped each other out because he helped her see uh -huh. moira and stuff yeah so yeah i mean she manipulates him again the same way like you're saying that she did exactly in that scene in this episode, you know, we see that Moira's broken and it's June, the one that kind of lifts her up yeah. and she's able to like, get away. Um, it took me to that scene in, in season four again, you know, when Moira's the one that finds her um, and finally gets her on the boat for her to get to Canada. But before that, I, I don't really remember the episode. Moira and Emily are talking in Canada and, you know, Emily asks her about always picking up June's messes and talking about the angels flight and Moira I, I don't remember the line but Moira responds like she's annoyed at June and, and when I saw it the first time I was shocked I was like okay well that's that's kind of like your best friend but then when she rescues June and takes her on the boat and you know she's talking to her like don't let me leave you again mm -hmm. you do know that she feels guilty and just yeah. like in Jezebel yeah. she feels guilty because she left her she yeah. left her alone that one time and then she left her alone the mm -hmm. second time and she didn't want to do the same thing so I think Moira is at a better place quote unquote maybe in, in, in letting Gilead go or not being as angry because she mm -hmm. solved that part of her when she rescued June she was able to let go of that guilt when she brought her to Canada so I think that's oh yeah well so. that leads to her healing so much in season yeah, four in for sure mm -hmm. I can see that I was just remembering um in season four, I know Moira was having uh, a lot of strong feelings over um, Fred's trial. And like, I forget that Moira was also raped by Fred. And then this, this episode remind, right. reminded me of it. So 
it was just interesting to me. Um, yeah. And I think Kate, I think you had asked our group a while ago, would you rather be a handmaid or would you rather be a Jezebel? <laughs> I did. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. Where They're do you guys uh, weigh in on that? Initially, I said Jezebels because you have the ability to connect with other people there with friends. But mm-hmm. now yeah. I'm like, having to drink. be raped <laughs> every day by different men is different. Terrible. That's the thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's unexpected. You don't know what you're going to get that night. Someone yeah. That wants to like yes. meet you or that's why I choose handmade and I'm not. But happy still, about it, but the baby thing, it's just. I oh, don't yeah, know if horrifying. I could handle that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think I would be uh, able to do that. So maybe. Yeah. What are you gonna choose, Claudia? You gotta pick. Oh God! Just kidding. I'm not making anyone pick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jessica gives you more freedom too. You know, yeah. To sneak around. Yes. Like it has. I mean, this sounds horrible. It has its pros and its cons, and I don't mean it like that. But we, I'm pretty sure we you both have that. way more cons than pros. But yeah, you have to. You have yes. to think about yeah. everything. I, but what I happens have... to a Jezebel? Do we know what happens to a Jezebel? I can't imagine. Do we know right what happens when they age out? I know. Like at least we know the handmaids, they get three times. And if they produce the child, then they go off. Where do they go and... to? Is there some paradise? <laughs> Like, I don't right. know. Handmade <laughs> colony that's not toxic? I have right. no idea. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. they, get to, they get to go live out their lives, right? Yeah, no, where, uh, not, someone knows who. Claudia, go. Um, it's uh, like if they can produce, they will do as long as they can. And so not after yeah. the third time they will be sent away, but uh, they will keep on doing this as long as they can. So yeah. maybe until they're 40 or 50. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And um, of course, and, after and that, what? Yeah. after that, it seems like you get like in a home, like the aunts or something. Yeah. But okay. we don't, we never gotten to. Um, no, nobody's really... gotten to that level. Yeah, maybe. Or, yeah. Right. Hmm. So maybe it's just. They haven't explained rooms. it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's hmm. just, they say it, but in, in, in reality, they send them off. So we can't really. I mean, it's a nice thought, but at this, I, at this point, I don't really believe it. Yeah. I'm yeah. assuming it's a dead mean... end for both options. And yeah, the Jezebels, yeah. and also Jezebels, sometimes there are accidents, which we learn yeah. about in yes. the mm-hmm. uh, I guess, I, I mean, I think if there was more information, like, I don't know, you only have to do the Jezebels thing a couple times, a couple nights a week, and otherwise you could read and stuff, I might reconsider. <laughs> well, she does say that like they read. only have to do it at night. They <laughs> only have to do it at night. So they're free yeah. all day. <laughs> to, to read, and I don't right, know. That implies Chat. that it's every night, and that's and, a lot. Yeah. Have alcohol. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. It's every night. Every night. Yeah. Whatever. This is a shit question. I'm sorry that I. Sorry. Asked. <laughs> I just thought it might be, no, I asked. It might be interesting to open up to, to <laughs> our listeners, too. Yeah. It is a good question to ask. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an scary, interesting thing to think through. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's cool. horrible to think about, from but it outside. also depends if, if you're able to disassociate from it. Like, yeah. June disassociates. <laughs> like, She's amazingly good. well to do yeah. i mean yeah like a champ so if you're not able to disassociate you you know you you won't be able to do jezebel there's no no way they're gonna break you no. like that yeah and you 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 know the ceremony even i think i've said it before even for the viewers it's something that it's so wrong we understand it but we kind of see it and we don't see it as as bad as you know like a violent rape which is horrible yeah. because in society that's also the same case like mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. yeah. so the show does that very well how to like not justify it. that's not the world i'm looking for but kind of like see it differently when it's basically the same thing it's still rape. yeah they soften it <laughs> by being like oh well they they're prepared so and right. taught about the ceremonies it's not a brutal mm-hmm. rape where they're grabbed behind a back alley and so mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. it's nicer and it's not it's all right but right. yeah yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, and we already talked about Moira and June just switching like strength constantly, and that's it's cool part of their friendship. But that is my last my my very last note is Naomi's shit with the baby. Ever's a great actress. <laughs> she is. I I think she is just yeah. great because you could just see it on her her disdain for the place. She just, I don't feel like she's 
a true Gilead believer. Yeah. And, mm, no. An example is when Nick, when they have that pravaganza and they marry off Nick and the young brides come out. I mean, she looks like she's going to vomit. Right. And Serena's yeah, all like, oh, gorgeous. And she's really? like, oh, like, oh look, at, look at Naomi's face. She's like about to retch. Like, really, these are babies. Sex. Like, oh, I have to yeah, look back. she's just not um, happy. That's why she's in a constant state of like pissed off. I think yes, she's just I've that before. She's like, I've I hate that this. I'm, yeah, just watch her face. She's, she's great. I've read that before. I also love no. that she mm-hmm. turns Warren in or asks for maximum punishment or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. I love it. I yeah. just realized um, uh, Naomi has a daughter at this point. Serena just doesn't have her at the same time because mm-hmm. June is still mm-hmm. pregnant and she doesn't know what she's getting. But Naomi has a daughter, and there come these fourteen-year-old oh, girls. You're right. You're right. So maybe no, no. Nicole's born. Nicole's born then, right? Oh no, 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 no. 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 soon, soon, but not yet. Yeah, you're right. I'm and wait, Serena you're has Yeah, yeah. yeah. She bleed she's out pregnant. that night. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. pregnant, yeah. Yeah. but they don't know yeah. it's a girl, is what she's saying. Oh, so right, she right. She's yeah. not thinking mm-hmm. of that. Those children as oh, those could be my daughter. <sighs> Yeah, exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. But but it comes back later when uh, Serena is at the um, salvation or what is like called like uh, when they kill off Eden, and that's oh, yeah. that's when mm-hmm. Serena has the baby girl and realizes, oh shit, this could be my kid. Serena mm-hmm. doesn't have a baby yeah. yet, though, right? Oh, yeah, she then she does. Yeah, mm-hmm. she does. Yes, sorry, the baby there. She's torn oh, up. Yes. Then you're right, Claudia. She's like yes. torn up. Then. Like, that's what yeah. pushes her to let her go if, if that wouldn't yeah. have happened mm-hmm. like serena would not have let you know holly go because she's a bitch yes yes i think no. she needed the finger chopping too just to push yes. her over the edge i think it was a culmination of yeah. everything yeah <laughs> but yeah i i was uh, i was happy that um naomi uh wanted to do the same because uh when serena got there and said hey we have girls and yeah. do we want to make the world better for them and she immediately immediately jumped on the train so it was in her mind probably all the time yeah. even though she's a bad shitty mother but uh she loves <laughs> the baby obviously and uh, yeah also i love Naomi. she's like a comic relief i know <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> my favorite she's line so was narky yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So snarky. Yeah. And my favorite was the uh what was how did she say the biting uh, it must cool. be genetic. Oh, maybe, yeah, yeah, genetic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, because Janine bit her and yeah, obviously uh, Janine's <laughs> daughter <laughs> bites her as well. Yeah. Her delivery oh, is perfect. I have more stuff on Nick for this part. Let's talk Nick. <laughs> yeah, the, the whole thing at the Jezebels. The thing is, later he brings the letters to um, Canada, as we know. Mm-hmm. And um, we never see them talk before. This is the first thing about it. We can assume that they talked about it in the Boston Globe. I think the script it... said that, by the way. Okay, good. Um, but they didn't talk about so it. So it's okay. So he knows about the letters, but he ne- no one told her what to do with that. She just got the note that she has to wait for someone to, to say to her what to do with it. So he can't know what he is supposed to do with it later but still he just takes them with him to Canada like like he was already knowing what to do so when now in this episode he went like whoa wait she's doing something that's when I realized that maybe he's um, already doing many things for uh, Mayday yeah. And um, he knows that something is about to happen there and a package is going to be dropped off and he knows, maybe even knows what it is and what's about to happen with it. So when June mentions it, he's immediately, okay, I have to go to the bar and see if mm. something happens tonight. Maybe he uh, best didn't see Rachel. So yeah. maybe only Rachel knew what was about to happen. Yeah. Yeah, so... She couldn't help him there, but he knew that something was going to happen if really June says at the bar. Mm-hmm. And later when, when June had the letters, 
he knew obviously that she has it and he immediately took them in when she was not sane anymore yeah and he immediately took them out so he knew what to do with it yeah so he had to be in contact with Mayday and um this is also proven by him getting trying to, to get June out because why would Mayday help him get a handmaid out they it's wouldn't. one of the right. most dangerous things no. ever yeah so he had so um he has to have um pull with them yeah he has to- he's been helping oh, them yeah. and now he calls them this early later. too yeah yeah but so in season one it's evident you know right. it's not for some but <laughs> right if you pay attention yeah. it's there <laughs> yeah it is it's probably not more doing stuff like intelligence things for them but uh he must must have done enough that they trust him like that that he knows exactly what's happening yeah, he's not going to yeah. contact Mayday out of the blue as a guardian in, yeah. well, in an eye and say, hey, help me get this girl out. And they're like, yeah, OK. Well, and I think it's pretty new, to be honest, because what are what are we three years in? So I think like in the Boston Globe scene when she's upset and he's like, you know, we don't I have never done this. I don't think they were huge like they had a good thing about moving handmaids. It was there. It was in the beginnings. Yeah. But he himself, I mean, this was the first thing. It's like all new. They're doing all this undercover um, stuff. It's all coming yeah. together, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought he was like, um, he never done this because he's always bringing he information and stuff, but mm-hmm. they bring people out, but he has never done it. So he doesn't know the procedure. Right. It's just but I think that's this. why it failed because it was new. They really haven't done a bunch of it either. Okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Maybe like Moira, right, yeah. even the guy who was trying to get her, didn't they shoot him? So they it's failed. just yeah. like yeah. everybody's trying. And <laughs> that's why it failed. Like people are like, Nick made it fail. He called. Oh, and, no. And, no. no. Yeah. I mean, if you think about <laughs> it, there's sense. so many like yeah. different people involved with her getting out. Right. Like, you know how was how from the that nurse the male like nurse this one the wrong person. thing and you know obviously it failed she even tells yeah. june like it was really hard for them to tell me where you were like yeah i've yeah. never done this before i mean yeah. we yeah. see that throughout the first um three seasons we do see there's mayday there's like a little bit of resistance but they're just like little groups seen there's the marthas and it's not organized and i yeah. think that this goes to when june says you know we are the ones that we've been waiting for we are mayday like because yeah. there just is started. a mayday it's, but it's yeah exactly it's not really it's like in its infancy right now and so yeah. there's going to be many mistakes because that's what yeah. happens when things i mean nobody's done it before and so yeah. then come to season four it's actually really starting to take off and i think that's where we're going to head into season five and six is how they're really going to organize it mm-hmm. now you know yes which will be cool to see. Um, and at that, that I, I found it really nice to see the butcher that brings June out yeah. of the hospital. Yeah. It's already there. I, I yeah. didn't realize it's the same guy. I know. I noticed that too. I love that guy. What's his name? Yeah. Do you know his name? I don't think so. Shout sweet out butcher. To him. <laughs> the butcher. <laughs> the sweet butcher mm-hmm. with the kind face. Yes. And smile. Yes. But that is interesting, Claudia, um, that maybe he already knew that something was going to, you know, be happening mm-hmm. at the bar. And that's why he was so quick to pick up on that. I don't know. Yeah. But he, um, I, I do love that he got the letters out. Like he never, yes. didn't, clearly he did not even discuss it with June before he took them to Canada. Because yes. he would protect her from that anyway, that fear. And he did that all on his own. And I just think that he is a really excellent human being. Yeah, no didn't even take credit for it. No, it was all no. Luke. What? Luke didn't take any <laughs> risk. He took all the risk. What does that mean? Well, no, and it was Aaron who was like, this can go boom. It didn't even yeah. dawn on <laughs> him. Didn't even, <laughs> he didn't even think about it. He's like, what am I supposed like, to do with all those letters? <laughs> the one who doesn't talk is the one who's like, boom. You know, yeah. this will go boom. She spoke two words and she, she's like, dudes, this can go boom. Like, please. You're going to make me have to talk. And Nick could have ki- been killed. Yeah. Yeah. God's yeah. sake. Out of, yeah, Gilead into Canada, surrounded by, oh my God. So sweet. I love him. But you guys I can't that. get over it. <laughs> I know. We never will get over it. No. We'll never recover. 
The only way I will recover oh. is if they assassinate his character in season five. I trust yeah. Lizzie completely. No. I, I know, have no oh, doubt. I trust Bruce, <laughs> so I trust them all. If they do that, then the 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 season is not existing. Nick is still the same, but the season is not living for me. <laughs> so, oh. The handmaid's ended with season four. And that yeah. would be okay. It was an excellent ending, but please, please don't assassinate his character by having him have relations. He would not do that. Made. Like, no. Even if it's no. written in the script, I think Max will riot. Just like, no. no. This is well, Joe did Nick that. Blaine. Joe, this is Joe not, refused a rape. This, this is, yeah, this is, this is not Nick Blaine. Like, not how, how you can't, you can't he imagine got... him. Because he wouldn't have never even slept with Eden if, if June wouldn't have oh. pushed him to do it. Right. right. Like, yeah. And then mm-hmm. she never so, like, so she, ha- he has like zero, zero reason except his own survival to sleep with a like, handmaid. Or the handmaid a... And I think he would rather die. Honestly, yes. Like, honestly, I think the same. Die. He, he yeah. would, he yeah. would I never know. do this. It's but like no. he would probably sleep with his wife if she's not a teenager anymore. Like if she's yeah, like an adult. Well, like, he slept with Eden, adult. but only for June's survival. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But mm-hmm. if if it's another like if his new wife is another teenager, he would not. No, not, not the before. only he thing is mean, uh, he has to stay alive to get hannah out yeah it's just the only thing that's keeping him um even doing something because i think if that part wasn't still there he would have just um try to get gilead to fall but if but he doesn't ha- succeed he, it's he's, like okay he said he cannot get hannah out so yeah yeah but uh he's still um knowing where she is he can still get yeah. intel on her so he's keeping tabs on her for june and um and he did, yeah, yeah he did do this but like ultimately if it comes to this or this decision like i don't you know. should think about what june would want and june yeah. would not want him to impregnate someone else or have sex with a handmaid or even his wife he yeah, should sure. get out they just, just need to be careful just not go there <laughs> we just not go there we've had four seasons it's not needed it just it's cheapens not. Things. We already we did had, this. We yeah. did this. We've all suffered through watching them have sex with lots of other people and oh, do that. Lots of like, other people. Yeah, I was going to say, wait, who else? They have. Lawrence, <laughs> June and Lawrence. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, June. Uh, other uh, other June. People. June too, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, but we've had four seasons and I mean, we, we're doing this podcast and w- I think we've all kind of really deep dived into the episodes looking for the parallels and clues. And we all pretty much think the same about this character and we, we connect the dots. Like you don't, I mean, I, maybe I'm trying to be too, po- too positive, but you don't build a character in a certain way. I mean, it's done before and then just completely go the opposite way when you haven't yeah. even hinted at it. Come on, Lizzie. If you're listening, we believe in you. Protect Man. that line, please. I have I have a very positive gut feeling about the next season. Oh my god, Julia though. She I do too. Shit. <laughs> Julia and her baby, they know things. So this yeah. helps. Yeah. <laughs> makes me feel better. Oh, I like when you mentioned, like I think Scarlett was about to um say something about Janine's so survival or like the, the, the fact that she's gone that she's survived the end of the episode and she's in the hospital and they try to save yes. her and in oh, the good. end why do they do that i mean you can oh yeah sorry yes. yeah, i remember now somebody said in the rewatch i don't remember who it was you know they kept her alive only to stone her because then yeah. obviously we go to, epi- to the next episode and you know they bring her out to punish her because she put you know a baby in danger which is fucking like just let her die then you know, like, like, all the resources, the all the effort to her. Yes. save her life, yeah. to just kill her. Yeah. They're going to make an example. Properly. That's what they're doing. They're yeah, going to twist it. Yeah. We didn't get a cliffhanger with Janine, at least. <laughs> Not like in season four for like, I don't know, five episodes. So everybody's yeah. still alive. Where's Janine? Yeah. This I was so that- insane. How sad is that? Like, I mean, it's the second time she's about to be dead, and then she's yes, just back in her role. Like, oh, it's the worst handmade. Oh. Or like, it's mm-hmm. okay. I think that's a wrap on our deep dive into season one, episode nine, the bridge. Uh, we hope you check us out on Monday for our spoiler-free analysis into season one, episode ten, and then again on Wednesday for our deep dive. 
Thanks for listening to Above the Garage. Bye. 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 You know, I think about us, the three of us, what we could be. I think about it all the time. Please, it's dear. No, it's not. I know Jim. She's my friend. I care about her. How's your day going? You look pretty. Thanks. I wore it just for you. Her father's a driver named Nick. He helped me to survive. Yes, you can, because I can't lose you. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. What about you? Your girlfriend is a badass.